Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. <clears throat> In today's video, we'll be showing you how to install DocuSeal. Um, DocuSeal is pretty much kind of an open source alternative to like DocuSign and other things like that, where essentially you have, um, as like a company or whatnot, you create documents that you want your employees, employees to sign for, you know, your tax stuff or whatever. So it's kind of like a nice platform to be able to, you know, pop, create a PDF, populate it with all the text boxes, signature boxes, date boxes, and stuff like that. And then send out a link to your employees um, where they can essentially review and sign if they agree or not sign. And then there's a lot more talking about it. <laughs> so, but you know, this is kind of a nice alternative to be able to kind of see um, you know, if you never need to do this, it's kind of fun to do. So, uh, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So, if you enjoy my content, or want to sponsor me, or send me some free swag, let me know. My email is in the description below. So, let's get started, guys. All right. So, first off, what we'll do is log in to our server that we created. So, I think it's on forty-four here. Oh, type the password in right. Um, and then we will install Docker. Um, they have essentially a Docker related um, package that you can use too for their uh, installation. So we're going to just go through that. Um, and while we wait for Docker to install, we will update DNS so that we can resolve it via DNS name in our environment. So we'll go to our GitLab repo that we have set up for DNS. We'll make sure we update the serial number here. And we'll make sure to add DocuSeal in here in A and 172.61.44. All right, now we can be able to commit that uh, DocuSeal. Okay, so now that that's good, um, we can actually go to DocuSeal GitHub here and see their open source essentially uh, version, which I'm, I've only been ever on the receiving end of like DocuSign, <laughs> but DocuSign is, I mean, it's essentially pretty nice. I would say this is probably very similar. I mean, it's obviously different, but um, I mean, for the stuff that I've seen from things that I've had, <laughs> um, essentially they're both the same um, in regards to like, I mean, I'm gonna just read a document and, and have a text box to sign, right? But if you do more complicated stuff, they, they probably have more complicated stuff. But if you keep on scrolling down, there is a Docker, and a, a Docker Compose. We'll use the Docker Compose down here. Um, so we will do systemctl start docker, systemctl enable docker, and then we'll get oh, no, the Docker Compose binary and make sure it is executable. All right, so now that we got that, we'll run this curl command, boop. And we can check out the Docker Compose file. So let me make this a tad bit bigger here. So looking at the file, obviously you got the app where essentially um, it will connect to the database, which they also have a database here. Um, so obviously you should probably change your database password because you really shouldn't. But it, no, if you change it here, you want to change it over here too because this is what the password is. So in case you do change it, you want to change it in both spots. I'm not going to change it, but you can change it too if you want to. Um, also, there's like a host variable in here, so make sure you read the documentation because in here it tells you this is how you set up the host name. Um, so what we'll do here is do host equals docuseal dot dragon dragon dot local, and then we'll do doc compose up and detach. So now pull the application and pull all three layers here. Give it a second. Um, Fifteen seconds, sixteen seconds. It's like a count up. <laughs> all right. So now, oh well, we're still waiting for the database. Geez, databases are always the slowest thing. <laughs> All right, so the database is now up. So we can see that we have both the caddy. We got the app listening on 3000. We got caddy listening for the reverse proxy on 80 and 443. And then our database is um, on 5432, which is the default Postgres database that the app will connect to. So I don't know off the top of my head. Um, Doc, you seal. 
um, if the caddy thing works, but it looks like it does work. Okay, so essentially it's just on HTTPS, it'll go through caddy, reverse proxy to the app on 3000. So you don't need to hit the app on 3000 specifically. Um, but here we will set up a your user. Um, so drag in and submit. So now you've created your first user here. So from here, you can create your template that you want to sign. So template, uh, we'll just name it template. Uh, and then essentially ask you, you know, PDF or image. So we'll do um, sample PDF. Um, yeah, let's just download this. And let's upload this sample. <clears throat> so from here, supposedly if this was more of a, a legal type document, you'd get less screenshots, more more words, and more small prints that you'd essentially sign your life away, right? Um, but in this case, you can see that this is a little bit different. But what I can show you here is we you can do stuff like add a, add a text field. Um, so for example, you want to like you know say something you know. Enter your name, text field. This is what your name would be. Um, you can do obviously signatures, dates, um, and you can have them attach a file to if they need it. So like all these things over here are essentially just things that what you can do to set up to allow the user to be able to do something. So I'll show you here. So we can save this. We can copy the link. So or or if you had SMTP configured, you could send emails to the link. Um, on, interestingly, there's a phone SMS too, um, but that's in DocuSue Enterprise, so you can't use it here. Um, but essentially, you have the link. It will um, give you the template here. So we were invited to submit a form in the template. Um, so we'll enter our email. And you can see, essentially, we got the form here. And if we scroll all the way down, we can now see, you know, we got a text box. Oh. A text box which we can type here and enter in that text box. We got a signature box where we can type in text or take an image, so whatnot. So that's like the signature. You can set the date, um, you know, like tomorrow's date, or you can submit an attachment. So essentially, all the boxes that I put on this document um, using DocuSeal is essentially boxes that would essentially what you would require from your employee or a person to submit. Um, it's kind of like a you know a form field essentially. So all these um, are on here, but it's kind of an easy drag and drop. So once you have it like all formatted in your in your PDF, you just essentially drag the box, and they will sign here. They'll you know put the date in here, and they will set everything. So um, obviously this is a well formatted <laughs> document um, in regards to like kind of showing that, but um, to essentially just show you what's in it, that's kind of how you kind of get started. You can create a template. Send send it send over the form for whoever you want to review and sign, and then it should um, be good. Um, submit form. Oh, is that a required field? Oh, that might be a required field. Submit. All right. Form has been completed. Um, so then you can download the form. You can you can see the download of form with everything completed, and yeah, that's that's essentially it. So you, now you've now you've, you've essentially completed the form and you've got the things you need. So if you need to kind of configure your stuff, you can definitely configure and see how you can use it. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.